Hi, I renamed my talk for today to Spying on Your Programs, in which we're all going to become spies and wizards. Um, so, um, I wanted to start out with saying that this talk is not really about Python. <laughs> um, I really love Python, and I wrote Python all day today. Um, but this talk is not really about Python in any like serious way. Um, what it is about is it's about a kind of like um, fundamental problem when you're programming, which is you have a program and you want to know what your program is doing normally. Um, and like a lot, oftentimes you don't know, right? Like you have some ideas about what you think your program might be doing and often you're wrong. Um, and this talk is about kind of treating your program as a black box and abandoning the notion that you might actually know what it's doing and just like observing it and observing it like its, in, its inputs and its outputs and you're like, well, I thought it was going to do this, but that's what it did. So I guess that's like the reality. Um, and when you treat your program as a black box like this, you don't care what programming language it was written in because um, you have no idea what it was doing anyway and it might as well have been written by like an enemy. So. <laughs> And like your past self is basically an enemy. Um, right. Uh, so like normally when you debug, like you look at your source code or you add print statements, you like know the programming language, and we're not gonna be doing that. Uh, we're just going to be wizards. Um, and I'm gonna explain what I mean by that um, because that's not like a very helpful description. Um, one really basic example of a tool that lets you see what your programs are doing without caring about what they are um, is top, right? Or like any kind of system monitor where um, it's like, well, Xorg is using 10% of your CPU, Chrome is using, like you might have like a million, you can see I have like five Chrome processes which are slowly eating up all my memory, right? <laughs> um, and it doesn't matter like, whether a Python program or like a C++ program is taking all your CPU, it's taking all your CPU and that's it. Um, and so this is like a very like broad view of like what a program is doing, um, like how much CPU and memory it takes up. Uh, and we're going to see how to like learn much, much more specific things about our programs. And I'll make that more clear as I go on. So um, we're going to start out with uh, wizard school uh, or <laughs> where we talk a little bit about operating systems. Um, and then uh, we're going to uh, figure out how to find configuration files. Um, and we're going to investigate the case of the slow program, in which we're going to have three mystery programs. And we're going to figure out why they're slow um, without reading them, just by running them. So um, let's talk about operating systems for like five seconds. Um, so what is an operating system for? So let's say you go to google.com and your operating system does a million things for you while you go to google.com, right? Um, you start like typing in the address on your computer and you press keys and it's like, it knows how your keyboard works. It runs code every time you press a key. Um, you send data over the network and it handles all your network packets, right? Like it implements these network protocols, like TCP, IP, and it's like, okay, I got a packet, okay, I'm sending it to Google, okay, I got a packet from Google, okay. And it like interprets all of that so that you don't need to know how these like network protocols work. Um, it does things like writing files to disk or like writing like some kind of cache, Chrome, whatever, to disk. This means that you don't have to know how your hard drive works and how file systems work, right? Because like something needs to know how the file system works, um, but that person is not you. Um, you're just like, hey, operating system, I just want to open this file, okay? And it's like, yeah, no problem, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's got you covered. Um, it does things for you, like it allocates memory, right? If you're out of memory, it's like, no, sorry, I, it's over. Um, this happened to me earlier today because I was like, I was running this Java program, which was trying to draw this really big graph, and it was going, and it was going, and it was going, and at some point, the operating system was like, no. And Java was like, no, and then it crashed, and then like, I couldn't see my graph anymore. Anyway, um, but that's not relevant. <laughs> the point is that your operating system manages your memory for you so that you don't have to. Um, it'll like, communicate with your graphics card so that like, um, you can uh, like see stuff on the screen like right now like this is like apparently my operating system knows how to project because I don't, I don't know how that works uh, right anyway um, so 
There's all the stuff that it does for you, right? But there's this basic thing where it's like, how do you ask the operating system to do stuff for you? How does that even work? Um, so this was confusing to me. I didn't know how this worked for the first like nine years after I started learning how to program. Um, but then one day I learned it, and I learned about system calls. Um, who knows about system calls? Lots of you. System calls are the greatest. Hi. <laughs> Um, so system calls are like the, the, the interface to your operating system, right? You open a file, and you're like, hey, can you open me a file, please? Um, you want to start a program, and you're like, hey, can you start me a program with egg, the exec VE system call? You want to change the file's permissions. You want to like, send data over a network. Um, lo lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff happens through system calls. Um, and this is going to be like one of the keys to spying on our programs. Um, is system calls, because we're going to use strace, if you know what that is. Um, and if you don't, that's the whole point, um, is that I'm going to tell you about it. So, we've learned everything we need to know about operating systems for this talk. Um, one is that your operating system does tons of stuff for you, and you should love it, and it's on your side. Um, <laughs> except when, anyway, uh, it's overall on your side. Um, and that programs tell it to do what to do using system calls. So we are now operating systems experts. Um, I yeah, and now we're going to use our newfound operating systems magical knowledge to debug some stuff. And we are going to solve the case of the missing configuration file. Um, so who like, has ever run a program, either your program or someone else's program, and you don't know like, what it's using to configure itself, but you can't find the file? Um, is that really annoying, or is it really annoying? It's just kind of really annoying. And like, you don't like, want to go read the documentation. Like, I hate reading documentation. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> it takes too much time. You have to like, Google it. I'm like, what if like, your internet isn't working? And then, like, or maybe you could try to read the code, but that sucks too. Um, so no, we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to find out what the configuration file is, like a wizard. <laughs> um, so s is the program that lets you be a wizard. <laughs> Um, by that, I mean it lets you trace what system calls your program is calling. Um, strace is uh, Linux only, um, but there are similar programs for like uh, BSDs and like OS, OS 10 and stuff. Um, but I'm just talking about Linux, that's what I have on my computer, um, so that's it. Um, right, so what strace does is it tells you every single system call your program calls, which is like pretty much the greatest thing in the universe. Um, I have a kind of obsession with strace, I've written like probably like nine blog posts about S-Trace, like S-Trace on the train, also on the plane. Um, is it, you should also S-Trace on the, on the plane, it's really fun. Right, anyway, here's how you S-Trace. Um, you take your program, like Google Chrome, any program you want, in any programming language, it could even be in like Fortran. Um, so, you start Google Chrome. When you start Google Chrome, first thing that happens is it starts Google Chrome which is like maybe not a big surprise, but it was a surprise to me, because I was like, oh yeah, of course, I get it. That's the first system call that happens, is the exec system call. So, um, you run strace in Google Chrome, starts Google Chrome, great. Um, we want to know some of the config files Google Chrome is using, and it's like, sad now. Um, this is what it looks like when you strace something. Um, <laughs> I mostly wanted to show you this because it's really confusing and I want to tell you not to be too afraid. Um, and that like nobody will hurt you. And that S-Trace won't hurt you. Um, you can kind of maybe see some stuff that you recognize. You're like, oh, libvorbis.so.0. And you're like, oh, it's something about some sound library is great. Uh, who knows? Um, so, if we are solving the case of the missing configuration file, um, my favorite thing to do is be like, okay, there's all this output that I didn't understand, and we're going to ignore all of it, and just look at the times when it's opening files. So it's opened a bunch of files, like .cache slash decomp. I have no idea what that is. Um, one important thing with strace is, is ignoring things, which <laughs> when you don't know what it is. <laughs> um, but you can see like there's like something like .config slash Google Chrome slash consent to send stats. Just like, what did I consent to? But that was... <laughs> 
<laughs> but that was the configuration by the Google Chrome opened, right? Um, which is fine. But, and you can run this on your program, right? Like, I, I use um, Hadoop, and sometimes I'm like, oh, where are the Hadoop configurations? And, like, I don't want, like, I already have to ex edit an XML file, and I don't want to, like, have to Google for where that XML file is. So I just S trace it and then tell you where the XML file is, and then I can, I can open it. Um, okay. So we have, we found our opens. Um, if you, if I look in it, there's like a key. Um, you can asterisk for other things, like for uh, exec VE, which is for, who here ever writes like wrapper scripts that like call other programs? Um, do you ever have bugs in those scripts? <laughs> you have bugs. I have bugs. Um, if you use asterisk for exec v and look at all of the child processes, you can see like every process that your program is starting, um, and then you know all of them. Um, I'm gonna skip these. These are like sending data over the network, which is also awesome. You can do tons of stuff with asterisk. Um, if your program is writing some kind of log file and you like forgot where it is. Um, or you never knew, you can look at the write system call, and that'll tell you where it's writing. Um, amazing. Um, so we have strace. One really th important thing to know about strace is um, if you have the urge to strace a really important program um, that like a production database, never do that. Um, that's a huge mistake, because strace can make your program like 200 times slower, um, because it like stops it every time it runs the system call, which is a lot. Um, so only s trace programs, which you're comfortable with being made 60 times slower. Um, okay, so now we're going to solve the case of the slow program. I wrote three slow programs for this talk. Um, one of them is slow because it spends all of its time like doing CPU stuff and like doing calculations. Um, one of them is slow because it's writing too much stuff to disk or reading too much stuff from disk. Um, and the third one is slow because it's waiting for like a slow server to reply. Like it sent out a request to like some server and the server is just like, I'm just gonna wait for a long time before I reply to you <laughs> instead of actually replying to you on time. Um, this is like kind of a cool thing about performance actually, right? Is because like when your program is slow, there's so many reasons. It's such an exciting world of possibilities and frustration. <laughs> Um, to know why it's slow. <laughs> um, so I've written three, and we're going to do a mystery hunt to find out which one is which. Um, and we're not going to use strace. We've already used strace. strace is over. We're going to use new tools. Um, so let's start with mystery program number one. Um, mystery program number one, I ran time on it. Time is a super great tool for programs that start and finish um, because it tells you how long it took. It took two seconds. It spent 0 0.09 plus 0 0.01 seconds on the CPU, 5%. 5% of time is not a lot of time. So what is it doing if it's not ca computing? I want... What? Waiting. I.O. could be correct. Um, but what it's really definitely doing is it's waiting for something. It could be waiting for I.O., could be waiting for something else, but we know it's waiting for something. So. How do we know what it's waiting for? Does anyone have any ideas? <laughs> we could use strace and we're not going to. Um, partly because imagine that you actually need your program to keep running at the same speed, and like it's not okay to slow down your program. And partly because it, we already know strace, so we're going to do something else, um, because that's more fun. So um, let's find out what it's waiting for. I'm going to do a demo. Live demos always work well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great. Um, mystery one. So we run it. It ran. It says hi. Um, and it took two seconds. Great. Um, so we're going to use something called WChan, or the wait channel. Um, so this is something I learned like yesterday, um, which is why I'm talking to you about it in talk today, because it's like the best thing I learned yesterday. Um, so the wait channel is like um, your operating system keeps track of what a program is waiting for any time that it's waiting. I had no idea. Um, also, I had a command um, already in place, and I lost it when I restarted my computer. 
Um, so you're going to get to wait with me while I type it out. Um, oh, look. Um, so this is PS incantation. So PS, this is a little small. Sorry. Um, PS um, normally will tell you like things about your processes, right? Like uh, blah, 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 whatever. Um, um, so we're going to print for each process um, the PID, the wait channel, whatever that means, um, which is like what it's waiting for, and the uh, name of the process. And then we're going to grep for mystery one. Does that sound good? Great. We're also going to try to like rearrange our windows. Um, great. And we're going to do that in a loop because we haven't started our programs. It's not running, right? So we're going to like 100 times mystery, grab mystery one. We're also going to sleep. Great. So now it's, uh, it's doing that. And, but our program isn't running yet, so we also need to run our program. OK, amazing. It's happening. I found it. It's here. SK wait data. Um, do you know what that means? Because I didn't really know. <laughs> The way I found out was I Googled it. Um, and I Googled SK wait data. And it was like, wait for some data on a network socket. It was waiting for some data on a network socket, guys. <laughs> um, I, I can show you what this program does. Um, it's not that interesting. Um, mystery one. Um, Request.get localhost 5000. Um, that's the program I wrote. Um, I can show it to you. Um, it's, uh, it gets and then sleeps for two seconds. <laughs> That's all. Um, so it's like not a big surprise that it was slow. Um, great. Um, so we debugged mystery program one, and we are like wizards. Um, now we're going to debug mystery program number two. Um, we won. It was the network. This is the best. Um, so mystery program two. We time it again um, because like as investigators, you want to take the first same first step every time. Um, spends 2.74 seconds, 2.74 seconds total. All of that time is like in user space. Like it's not like none of that is like the operating system's work. We're done. Like so, I said that we're not going to use like programming language specific tools. Um, but if your program is like 100% on the CPU and it's like all in user space, you should just use a programming language specific tool to profile it at this point, right? It's just kind of slow. Um, and there's not like any like operating system magicalness that I think is really going to help us out here. Um, I can tell you what this program does. That's what it does. <laughs> um, this, one, this one is not a huge mystery. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's like I don't have any like special magical tricks for this one. Um, I think that if you were gonna profile this program just for knowing this, you should probably just profile it using your regular tools. Um, mystery program number three. So there are only three possibilities. We've eliminated two of them, but this one is really fun um, and it has some surprises. Um, even though you probably might know what it was if you're paying attention. Um, but there are still surprises. I, I started debugging this, and I wrote the program, and then I was like, what happened? I didn't understand. So here we go. We ran time again. It took 10 seconds, 10% 10 CPU. What does that mean? Again, waiting. Someone else said I.O. You're probably right this time um, because of elimination. <laughs> But we definitely know that it's waiting. Um, so, um, but there's more here. There's more to know. Um, so, we're going to do some, we're going to run Python mystery three. Oh, look. Let's run it again. Let's run it again. So, I ran it three times. And then, let's keep on running it. It's like not taking the same amount of time all the time. 
Normally it takes 10 seconds to run. Now it's not taking 10 seconds to run. Why? What? No. Um, but we're going to find out what's going on. Anyway. So it takes a like, varying amount of time to run. Um, from like 0.3 seconds to like 3 seconds. You whispered something, um, which was correct, and you're going to be quiet. <laughs> um, we're going to look at something called DSTAT, um, which I think is really cool. Um, so DSTAT is a little bit like tough, and it just keeps on printing what's going on on your system. So it's like, here's how much CPU is happening, here's how much you're reading and writing, here's how much your network is reading and sending. Um, so this is pretty cool, because it gives you like an overall picture of what's going on on the system. So um, we just care about disk, let's say. Oh no, we were going to do that thing. Um, what was that thing? We lost our... Um, and we're going to type it out again. We're PS, and then we look at PID, WCHAN, command. Oh no, I forgot the sleep, everyone. <laughs> 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 this is what happens when you forget the sleep. <laughs> and the grep. Thank you. I think that this is the good thing about live demos, is that they're just way more fun. Um, OK, great. So you see some stuff here. Um, I am seeing some sleep on buffer and sleep on page. And I'm taking those to mean about the buffers and the pages. Uh, this is IO, which we all already knew because of spoilers. Um, <laughs> but we could have also learned that through logic and not spoilers, which is good to know. Um, but so now that we know it's IO, I'm just going to start looking at dstat and get it to tell me how much it's reading and writing. So let's start it. So that finished like pretty much right away. But you'll notice that even though the program is already done, it spent like some time writing data after it was done. That's kind of cool. Let's do it again. So it finishes. But then it's still writing data. It's not over. So like the kernel, the operating system is still doing work for a program, even though the program already finished. Could this be why the program doesn't always take the same amount of time? Um, the answer is yes, right? This is because of file system caches, because your operating system loves you, and it wants you to be happy, and it wants your programs to finish. So it's like, OK, I wrote that data, no problem. Don't worry about it. But it's not true. <laughs> It didn't write the data. It's just like waiting um, um, until like later um, when it will write the data. And this means that like if you, if you keep on trying to write more data, at some point it's like, no, like you have to stop. I don't, I can't. I don't have space to remember what you wanted to write anymore. Um, and what this means is that it, it takes a different amounts of time to write the data every time. Um, and what this also means is if we write um, a different version of the program, um, where we do something called fsync. Fsync tells, tells the operating system, like, yo, I actually need you to write this data right now. Like, <laughs> no pretending. Don't try to trick me. And if we try the version with fsync, um, which um, is why there was some whispering about flushing your caches. Um, and then it always takes the same amount of time, which is longer. So um, that was the demo. We won again. We always win, um, unsurprisingly, <laughs> because we constructed these examples ourselves. Um, but this was pretty fun, right? Like We got to treat all of our programs as a black box. They were written in Python, but that was like an accident. That it didn't need to be that way. They could have been any programs. We're basically wizards. Um, one thing I want to like suggest, even though I kind of hate giving people advice in talks, um, is that like it's pretty fun to learn more about your operating system and to learn more about like solving these kinds of performance problems. Um, instead of learning a new programming language, you can learn the operating system that's already on your computer that all of your programs run on, um, and it's so fun and it's the greatest. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you.